Okay, exciting times. I'm gonna try and get out for my first little solo voyage uh, I've ever actually done, um, well, under sail anyway, uh, and for more than two minutes. So yeah, conditions are pretty good. It's light, it's about eight knots. Um, I've only got an hour or so, so I'm just gonna try and get the boat out there, get the sails up and, and see whether or not I can handle the boat myself, which should be simple in principle, but we'll see. Okay, so step one, casting off. Now, this can be a little bit of a challenge on the pontoon I'm on because I want to head off to port, um, but the prop walk takes me to port when I'm in a stern. Uh, so I'm quite carefully trying to rig the lines here so that I basically get the back to kind of kick out on its own. So I've let the front go. Fairly confident that's not gonna drift off. This is me releasing the stair line. All my mooring lines are too big for the cleats, so it's always a bit of a flap getting them undone. Oh, I haven't let the bow line go. There we go, now I have. Cool, shock them all off. And let's see whether the boat goes the right way. Little bit more beans, don't want to drift into my neighbour. Has it started to come around yet? No, 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 yes, there we go. Cool, so that's good. I have had it before where I've literally ended up facing the wrong way and I'm about five metres away from a big granite wall on my starboard, so yeah, not ideal. Boom, step one done. Okay, so this is us leaving the gate of the QE2 Marina. Uh, we're heading north at the moment, and now we're just swinging round to the east towards Herman distance, and should be turning south. There we go. And I'm now turned to kind of head to wind so I can get the main sail up. Fitting the autopilot, uh, which I haven't used that much since I bought this one, but obviously I'm solo, so super handy. Um, one thing I find of this boat, I mean, obviously compared to wheel steer boats, it's a tiller steer boat, but because it's short and tillered, if I let go of the tiller, it tracks for all of about five seconds before it starts swinging off. So, yeah, autopilot fairly essential. Right. Should put a life jacket and jacket on before I left really, but there you go. Right, so I'm back to post the mainsail. And this is one of those things that at the time, possibly because of my sea position and how close I am to everything, I was kind of anxious to get done really quick, but it, it always feels like it takes way too long. Um, yeah, I'd uncovered it obviously, but I need to unstrap it. Um, on my boat, I need to put in the bottom three um, sliders into the mast track. My winch for raising it up, the main hose, uh, it's still knackered, so yeah, it requires a bit of molly coddling on the way up. Yeah, it's something I definitely need to improve on the boat if I was doing more solo cruising. trying to do with the throttle here is find a uh, speed where the boat keeps uh, steerage so it's moving forward through the water fast enough that the rudder's got control over the boat but not so fast that I run out of room and start crossing the mouth of the harbour where some quite big commercial boats come out in fact we'll see one in a second so yeah just trying to find that balancing out This is me 
me clipping in those uh, sliders one by one. Uh, I could leave them all in the whole time, but then when I go to pack the sail down, it's basically a really awkward large shape and it doesn't fit under my sail cover. So basically I end up having to release the sliders purely to get the sail far enough down the mast. Okay, next step is to get the Genoa out. Now will it unfurl or not? Because it's always a bit hit and miss on this boat. Moment of truth. Uh, is it coming? Is it not? Doesn't look like it. There it is. Okay, a bit of faffing around with the autopilot. As I say, it's been a little while since I've used one, so getting used to that again. Yeah, there we go, We're under sail, solo. I think now's a pretty good time to have a whinge about my outhaul set up on my mainsail. Well, not so much the outhaul, but how the clue of the sail is attached to the boom. You can kind of see there's like a big velcro strap. So yeah, that's basically because the sail didn't come with its own slider attached to the clue. Um, so I've used that as a temporary thing, but it, it's terrible. Like you basically, if you're on loose in the outhaul, you've got to shimmy that bit of velcro down the boom, loads of friction. Uh, I've had to remove some of the reefing system to get it to slide real fast. So. Yeah, need to get a slider on that for sure. It's around about now that I remember I've left my fenders hanging over the side in the water. Whoops. And here's an example of the kind of ship I was worried about running into if I cross the harbour mouth. It's a big trimaran fast ferry. It does about 40 knots when it's up to speed, so you don't really want to get in this way. Also kicks out a fair bit of wake as well. And here's a demo of me uh, working my terrible outhaul and having the man out of the sail along. Yeah, rubbish. Okay, so there's something a bit weird coming up that I don't fully understand, but I'd be interested in everyone's opinion. So we're about to hit the wake of um, the Liberation. And when we go through the wake, the water is kind of noticeably smoother. Now, is that just a phenomenon of I don't know, the, the fact the boat's just passed through it? Or is it something to do with the engines or exhaust just leaving a little bit of trace oil in the water and the oil smoothing the surface? So this is us crossing into it about now. I don't know, it's like the surface of the water just looks different. And I, I'm sure I remember reading once that 
old life rafts used to have like I don't know a bit of oil in them or something like that so you could pour a teaspoon of oil onto the surface of the water and it would help calm it but I don't know I don't know if there's any truth in that or if I'm misremembering it This is nice and relaxing. Only doing 4.4 knots, but yeah, loving it. Everything's been okay so far. Um, if I'm gonna solo sail this more, I think the main halyard arrangement, just raising the mainsail in general is just way too faffy. I've got to slot three of the cars back into the mast track when it goes up. Um, and you know when you're up there it's just taking a bit too much time off the helm really so i mean ideally i'd have the halyards run back to the cockpit but we'll have to see about that i might be one for a future episode this is what it's looking like so it's kind of south southeast today and the tide's running north as guernsey it is honestly glorious conditions. I mean, a little bit light, but perfect for, for my first time out. So yeah, chilling out. Got Johnny Autopilot on the go. Nice. I have got the drone with me. Uh, I'm still a little bit anxious about putting it up, uh, in part because I know it, it still needs a bit of calibration to its sensors and I'm just a bit worried about that. But if I was going to put it up, the scariest bit is obviously landing it. And I figure I'd probably try and land it with the boat hove too. So what I might do in a second is try and heave to and see how it goes. Yeah, I'm going to give that a go. The only thing I'm going to adjust is I might do some uh, Genoa offside so it's not going to be sat straight against the spreaders. Do that. <coughs> right, let's see how this goes. I'm going to do it all on the autopilot, my things. Going a long way round. Feels almost like we're gonna jive. I guess the thing on this boat is it does have a very large channel. It's about 145, 150%, so maybe it needs to be slackened off a bit to get the boat to settle. Actually saying that. We are kind of certain. So actually we're sitting with, I don't know if you can see the wind instruments, but the wind's off our kind of uh, port, kind of aft beam. Almost like we're on a broad reach. Drifting north in two knots of tide at the moment. Oh, happy days. I think I could land the drone like this. Depends if I let go of the helm. Tie it off. 
see what happens. So I'm flying drone. Me. I don't get that. Right, that's enough boring you into. Let's carry on. Uh, right, so. I'm going to leave the helm like that for a second. I'm going to bring the to that around. Put it back on autopilot. Sure not. thing I noticed after being out for well, not long really but being out on my own is I can't sit still <laughs> I'm just always faffing around um, I'm not sure whether that's because most of my sailing has been racing and there's generally always something to do or what but I really struggle to just sit back and actually relax and in, enjoy the moment um, yeah I wonder what I'd be like on like a crossing anything sort of eight hours plus by myself yeah it'll be interesting to find out but yeah i'm just constantly mincing around checking sails moving around the boat weird and maybe it's just because it's my first time out on my own maybe i'd learn to relax maybe i need a book i don't know Look at me, just relentless faffing. What am I even doing up there? I'm back again doing something else. Sit down, relax. It's irritating me just watching it. More faffing. Check if the sail is still there. Yep, still there. Right, at least I'm actually doing something here. Throwing in a quick tack. mumbling incessantly to myself. been tacking my way south against tide um, this is us coming back in behind castle corner towards the local bathing pool so like a saltwater uh, victorian era set of 
swimming pool is effectively the flood of the tide. So around about this point I realise I'm getting pretty close to them. Um, with this kind of camera angle it doesn't look particularly close but yeah probably getting a few dodgy looks from swimmers in the pool wondering if I'm about to join them. Okay, so these moments I quite enjoy. Finally kind of relaxing. The boat's going quite well, although we're obviously still beating to windward. Um, and into a fair amount of tide as well, so we're not going anywhere particularly quickly, but to be honest, there could be worse places than dawdling down the east coast of Guernsey, so no complaints. There's a ton of nice places to actually anchor up um, towards the kind of southeast of Guernsey and around the south coast. There's loads of very nice old bays um, that are quite protected if the wind's going in the right direction, obviously. Um, I'm not going to be doing any of that in this video because I basically can't drop my anchor. Um, for those of you that are up to speed, you'll know that my furling drum for my headsail basically runs all the way to the deck. And I can't even fit the anchor past it properly um, to drop. So yeah, a bit of a nightmare there. Uh, but something that'll be getting fixed hopefully in the next couple of videos. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I've got a few exciting plans. Um, yeah, so today I'm actually heading towards one of those anchorages at the moment called Fermain Bay, which we will see a bit more of in a second. Fermain Bay is, is one of those ones that was kind of really popular back in the 60s. I mean, it's still a popular bay now on the east coast of Guernsey. There it is. Um, that's a loophole tower, a defensive tower in the middle of it, uh, built to keep the French away, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, lovely waters, lovely place to go, lovely place to drop the anchor if your anchor works. Um, yeah, good for ice cream too. So if you're ever in Guernsey, pop down there. It's a banger. Right, I've uh, seemingly disappeared. Um, that bit of the island you can see just on starboard side is actually the southeast corner of the island. So Guernsey's a triangle. That's the bottom corner of it. So yeah, we've almost gone down the east coast. Uh, I've actually got to get back. So we're about to pull a UE and do some downwind running back to St. Peterport. Well, this is rubbish. Uh, it is literally a downwind run back to where I need to go. Um, as you can see, I'm not going particularly well. Now, I could put the spinnaker up, but I couldn't be bothered. Um, and so, we're going to have to go with the other option. The old goosey goose wing.
time for a bit of vang. Pulled leech of the mainsail down, so the mainsail will act as a more efficient air dam when I let it out, which is better for when you're running downwind, it's no longer acting as an aerofoil. Pull a traveller across. And now mince about trying to get the goose wing set up. Bloody hell, after all that faffing around, I might as well just rig this vinegar. Anyway, it's about this point that I realise I'm pretty damn hot. And this is the thing when you go from sailing upwind, suddenly turning around, sailing downwind. You haven't got an airflow over you anymore. And um, yeah, it's an amazing difference. Much better for the microphone though, no more wind noise. Yay. And it's at this point I realise I would have been better rigging the Genoa sheet outside the guard wire because it's not really setting right like this. So further faffing ensues. happy to know that's it for the faffery. So now it's just some chilled out downwind sailing. Other than the irritating and perpetual banging of the uh, the boom back and forth. But yeah, downwind. Nice and easy. Casual. This isn't casual. What's this? We're in the world's slowest drag race with some kind of fishing boat. Ah, surrounded by seagulls. And it's winning. Damn it. Anyway, we're not here for fishing boats and seagulls. Time for some more high octane action. The goose wing jive. A largely pointless maneuver if you're actually going dead downwind. But I need to go slightly, slightly left of dead downwind. So we're doing a jive.
Well, that was tedious to do and even more tedious to watch. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of return leg. Um, I'm almost back to St. Peterport. The only thing that remains is to see whether or not the engine actually works. Um, obviously the ignition barrel is still snapped off so to start the engine I, <laughs> I actually have to go into the boat and do some jiggery pokery. Classic. is the tedious solo pack down and see whether or not I can actually moor the boat up by myself. And you're going to have to just trust me that I did because obviously the GoPro being the GoPro the battery runs out in the next few seconds. So yeah, honestly there was not an embarrassing mooring up process I promise. Genuinely ran out of battery. Anyway, stick around next time. Um, we're going to be doing some fairly major rigging changes which I'm I'm pretty excited about, so see you soon.